Hello everybody, Adam's Mesher is completed and it's time to move on to a new project and uh, I figured I'd make a tutorial series. What I was actually going to do is build a little lightweight RPG, but it turns out that Unity doesn't have very much in the way of RPG stuff. Um, and the reason is mostly because the RPG stuff it does have is really old. And that's not to, to, not to knock that stuff, but Unity's come a long way since then and there are some new features that are very, very handy. So we'll be using the new Unity UI. So if you're watching this before the beta has actually been released, you'll need to go get the beta um, because the old Unity UI is, we're just going to ignore that entirely. We're also going to be using Blender Blend Shapes and that means that this is going to be a 3D uh, uh, RPG. The first thing we're going to focus on is this new UI. Now, uh, in previous, in very, depending on what you're using, you know, if you're used to RPG Maker or the old Unity UI or whatever, there are a lot of different ways to approach menus. Um, but the big thing we need to take care of here in Unity is we have to understand what this is. This is a camera window. So if I were to change the size of the camera, you can see how it changes the size and shape of the window. That's the core of how Unity, Unity's new UI works. It has this automatically adjusting screen sized window. And because of that, we need to be a little bit careful to take advantage of that and not get sideswiped by it. We need to understand that that's what's happening and we need to know how to use that to our advantage. And we can end up with a product that the menus might be might be usable on a touch screen as well as a big screen although I'm not sure how adaptable we'll want to make this RPG in the end uh, anyhow normally when you would think about creating a new kind of menu you know, for example you get in a fight it pops up you get your pop-up that says uh, oh uh, fight item defend skill uh, and then you click on skill and it pops up oh uh, you know fire sword magic arrow uh, and then you click on one of those and it pops up and says which enemy and you've got these layered menus right well, your first instinct might be to make each one of those menus a canvas. So you'd make your, your menu inside this canvas, and then you'd drop the canvas into the assets as a prefab, and then you'd spawn the canvas. That's really not a very good way to do it. It has a lot of overhead, and it can bite you in the butt uh, when it comes to z-sorting. So we're not going to be doing it like that. We're going to be doing it a different way, and that is, inside of this canvas, we're going to create a panel. Here's our panel. Now, we have to remember in most of our base menu items, we're going to want to have a canvas group. The reason for that is because it'll let us animate quite nicely, and we can do things like fade in or spin or whatever else we need to do. Um, and that that's just a handy feature. It's not absolutely necessary. You can have your menus just pop into existence, but I like having a little bit of weight to my menus. Um, so this, as you can see, is the wrong size. And what's worse is when we change the shape and size of the screen, uh, it also changes in shape and size. And that's really not what we want for this kind of menu. Most of the time, our menus are going to be a specific size. And what we're going to want to do is just change where they are. Um, now, if you were planning to really handle a lot of different screen sizes, you would have to do some kind of dynamic resize. I'm not going to teach you how to do that just because it's um, a little bit more complex, and this is a really simple way to do things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. First things first, click on this button here, and that will let you change the exact shape and placement of your panel uh, so that we can just see you know, sort of what sort of size uh, of panel we might like. And this looks like it's about right. Um, yeah, let's just make it full width for now. So if we were to go into the game view, you can see that what we have is a nice little panel at the bottom of the screen. This is a, this is a pretty easy way to do things, but we have a problem where if this resizes, then the panel resizes. And the reason that's an issue is because let's say that we have a, um, a text, oh, a button. Let's make it a button. Button. And let's say that we make this button big, just for the sake of, of showing what happens to big things. You can see that when we resize it, the button does not resize. So our options are, we either need to make everything resize, or we need to make it so that um, the basic object does not resize. And that's a really tough call. The thing that actually makes it work or not work is how your text resizes. So this button here, I'm going to go ahead and make it size itself with the panel behind it. And the way I do that is I click on this, and then if you hold Alt, 
you can see how you get a different set of selections. I'm going to click on this guy. And that will resize the button so that it's the same height and size as the outer, uh, as the entire panel. More importantly, though, it has set our anchor points to the outside here, 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 and here. So to show you, we were like this. Uh, let me go undo it. There we are. We were like this. You can see how they're all in the center. That means that uh, it doesn't change size, but it stays anchored to the center of this particular object. If we click here, then it'll anchor to the left. If we click here, it'll anchor to all four corners. And if we hold Alt and click here, it'll actually resize and anchor to all four corners. So I'm going to just go ahead and resize this a touch uh, to make it so that we can see the text a little bit better. And we're going to zoom in on the text here. Now, if we resize our window to bring this whole thing down, then what we're going to see is our text just goes away. And what you can actually see is that the padding here and the padding here are constant. So what we're getting is it's getting crushed really, really fast. Just 10 or 15 pixels of difference will make that text go away. Because of that, in general, I'm going to argue that it's better to not resize your menus, or at least not resize the buttons in the menus. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this button, and here's our panel. Now the idea is we do not want the panel to resize quite as freely as it currently does. We do want it to resize left to right, because we can do a whole bunch of stretching of the statistical bars. Any kind of bar we have, we can do that. But we don't want it to stretch up and down because it just compresses too quickly. You can see how bad that is. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to change these anchor points from all four corners, as you can see here, to something that's more reasonable. And we can actually grab these and change them like this. So if we were to bring this down like here, then what would happen is it's no longer being resized nearly as badly as we resize vertically. But it's still being resized, and our text does not like being crushed. Vertical, vertical resizing does not work well with text, unless you're going to be using more advanced kinds of text, but we're not going to get into that. So what we are going to do is we are going to just flat out drag these down. And so now what we have is we have all of our anchor points at the bottom. Now if we resize it vertically, it's not going to resize vertically at all. See that? In fact, if we get small enough, it will become taller than the actual panel, and if we hit play then, uh, we won't be able to see the top. But it resizes fine. This is a good balance, I find, uh, between resizing and not resizing, because this will still resize horizontally, but it will no longer resize vertically, which is pretty much ideal. That's, uh, that's kind of what we want if we've got text and we've got bars. So just to show you how this works, we're going to create a little bit of a mock-up. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add another panel. This panel we will call um, Actions. And we're going to just change the color so that we can keep it separate. It's just a mock-up. We're not actually going to use this panel. But we can shrink it over here. Now, shrinking it over there sounds like a good idea, except you remember this outer panel, the background gray panel, does resize horizontally. And what we've just said is we want this much padding between the right hand side of the rear panel and the right hand side of the action panel. And that means it gets crushed. So we've got to take these guys and drag them over to the left. There we are. That's pretty straightforward, right? And we can add text boxes into this action, or buttons into this action. So, you know, we can have a button here and we can say, okay, well, hold Alt, resize, there we go. Just put these buttons in various places. Uh, that's a little too large, so how about we shrink it so that it looks right. Uh, we'll bring it down here, and then duplicate, and then here, and then duplicate, and then here, and duplicate. And you can always change these later on, do whatever you like. Uh, and we can add a little text box just to, to be more, um, more clear as to what's going on. We will call this uh, active uh, party member. I guess we can call it Active Hero. That's a little bit shorter. There's no particular reason to rename it at this stage since it's just a mock-up, but I find that I like to keep things as clear as possible or I get confused later on. And we'll just change the size of this text to... Oh, that's a little too large. 20? There we are. And then we will say, uh, let's have our, our main character be named An Hero. <laughs> Um, 
And now what we've got is we have a button array that does not move as you resize the outer, uh, as you resize the rest of the screen. And that means that we've got a uh, a menu that is always going to be visible. It's never going to weird, not never going to shift awkwardly. It's always going to be in the lower left hand corner of the screen. Uh, it's perfect. And what we need now is a bunch of bars over here for the party display, right? So let's add another panel. We'll call this one party state. Now again, we're just blocking this out. We're not actually wiring any of this up at the moment. And we're going to change the color to be red, just so that we can keep track of it. And once again, we're going to go ahead and uh, move these. You'll notice that sticky. This will stick together. Pixel perfect, and that's really handy because normally speaking, when you're blocking things out, that's exactly what you want to have happen. But as I mentioned, um, this is a little bit confused because if you squeeze it together horizontally, it's going to resize, and we've spent the last 20 minutes trying to fight that. But as it turns out, that's exactly what we want out of this guy. We want it to resize because we don't want it to ever overlap with our primary menu. This is just a, a menu that can be crushed down, so it's okay if it gets resized smaller and larger. And of course the party state will contain some images, like this guy. Let's resize him down, something like this. Let's actually go ahead and plug in his specific size. We're going to make him 64 by 64. And uh, whose portrait should we use? How about check mark. That's their portrait. And uh, what else do we need? Well, we need some UI elements. How about some sliders? We're going to have to make our own sliders due to the way that sliders don't work quite right um, for what we need. But sliders are good for just mocking up because they take up the right amount of space. So we're just going to put these in at the moment. And what we're wanting to do is change some of these sliders to have different colors to show the different kinds of stats that they might represent. But again, just a mock-up. There we go. And we can drag these sliders down. And then we can create another uh, text. And that's a little bit hard to read, so I guess we will make it bold. All right. So now, what have we got here? Well, these don't work. So what we actually need to do at this point is to anchor them properly. So um, we are going to be grabbing all four of these guys, and we're going to be anchoring them to the left side here. And now when we move it, you can see that they stay in the right spot, but they don't properly resize. Uh, and so we have to take these two in the middle, and rather than anchor them on the far left like we've done, we want to anchor them somewhere else. Where are those anchor points? They're hard to see. Um, I guess I can only edit them one at a time. That's annoying. All right. No biggie, I suppose. So right now our anchor point is here. What we actually want to do is set it here. And I'm going to delete this other slider just so that I don't have to try and do this twice. I'm going to do it once and then copy again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag the right hand side over to the other end of our slider here. And then we're going to duplicate that slider, move it down, and color it blue. All right, so now what do we have? Well, as we resize the screen, you can see that the sliders stay at the proper size. If we were to go into the game, and resize our screen here in the game, you can see that the sliders, uh, they don't stay at quite the right spot yet, but they're getting there. The thing that they're not doing correctly is they're not properly keeping their distance from the left-hand side. Now there's a lot of questions as to whether we want them to or not, but for now let's go ahead and make it so they do. And the problem is that I actually took this anchor point and I moved it too far to the right. I want it to be over here. And once again, just delete this so I don't have to deal with mucking about. And just to make sure that our sliders actually resize properly, let's go ahead and set their value to something other than max. There we are. So now when we look at our slider and we move our system around, you can see that they nicely resize 
even until they are crushed past the uh, the point of you know this is far less uh, screen space than you would normally allow. If you were going to have to have something which was that adjustable, you'd probably go with another setup. But for blocking things out for any kind of standard CPU size screen, this would be a functional lower class, you know, lower end of the screen menu. And what we can do is we can just drop that into our assets. We can call it low panel mockup, a low menu mockup. And then we can delete it. And the idea is you don't spawn the whole canvas. The canvas is always there. You just drop the menus that you need onto it, like so. I will warn you, until the next couple of releases of Unity come out, that will crash Linux and Mac. Um, there's some bug in how it compiles, and that action right there will eventually cause a crash bug. So, hopefully, if you're not following along right the day I release, that won't be an issue for you. If it is an issue for you, then don't do it like that. Clone the canvases instead. Anyhow, in the next time, we'll think a little bit about how to handle this maze of menus that we're starting to create.